In this video, I want to take a look at how we might go about drawing a passive foundation for a single leaf wall. The foundation that I'm going to draw here is based on the Isoquick passive foundation. You can see here it's uh, got a, a layer of hardcore minimum 150 millimeters up to 300 is what I'm going to be using here and a grit layer or a blinding layer of 68 and interlocking EPS of 300 is 2 150 mils. You've got the radon barrier here, you've got your steel reinforcement in a concrete slab of uh, 250 and you can see that there's a single leaf wall here without any detail in it and you can see that the insulation comes to halfways on that wall which is a 400 millimeter wall. At the edge here where the ground is, there's not much clearance to the radon barrier, so I'm going to increase that to 150 millimeters. So to start off with, I'm just starting from the ground layer, where I'll put in my higher core, which I'm putting in 300. So I've got two 300 layers, and then I've got a 250 layer. And what I'm doing here is now I'm just drawing where the center line of the slab would be on the wall and measuring over 1500 millimeters at a scale of 1 to 10 and then I can center my wall and I measure down my 150 millimeters from the top of the concrete slab and just using a 45 degree angle to come out to a 300 millimeter wide uh, piece of EPS shaped like that. So then it's just a center line really for the, the interlocking part and you can see that line that I fingered out there was uh, the ground line which is 150 millimeters now above the, the DPM. These uh, interlocking pieces of EPS, I've made them 600 millimeters wide, which would be roughly, I would imagine, around right there, and just a kind of squiggle line showing that uh, it's interlocking. If you wanted to go to the trouble of hatching it, you could, I'm sure. And there's a blinding there then below that. And below that again, then you would have your hardcore layer. So all I'm drawing in here now is the spacing away from the edge with the reinforcing bar. I'm sure in deeper slabs that you would have reinforcing bar possibly at a higher level as well too so it would be kind of cage which would improve its strength and I'm bringing the wall up here as well to the 400 millimeter wide wall and as you can see it is centered uh, between the EPS and the concrete slab. So the variable designs in this here I'm sure there would be high levels of insulation on this here, different types of renderings and waterproofing as well too, and different types of walls. And I would imagine as well the sub the soil type would be a big bear on using this as well too, depending on the loads. There'd be quite a bit of uh, calculations carried out to ensure that it'd be capable of carrying the, the weight of the superstructure. Uh, the details here I have sketched in is the uh, concrete for the concrete slab and the detail rather than trying to do a whole load of uh, little pebbles there showing the hardcore I've just done them sparsely and you can see there that I've also uh, highlighted the ground that has been placed on. Here I'm indicating the radon barrier with a red pen just to make it stand out a little bit more. With the 150 millimeter upstand up to the um, up to the D DPC or the, where would the DPC would be, the, the DPM has now come out. So then, just the details: single leaf external wall, for example, timber frame, uh, flexible render, which is placed on the outside of the EPS, which in which the uh, concrete slab has been poured just to prevent any mechanical damage and the widths of course in the wall may vary depending on the, the design. Reinforced concrete slab which I have in is 250mm, steel, re steel reinforcement bars of diameter 12, our radon barrier, interlocking EPS the 300 so it's 300mm uh, of insulation so it's in 150mm layers, two layers, and our blinding our grit layer which is only 68 millimeters and then the hardcore and all I'm doing here now is putting a little bit of color just to make it uh, stand out on the page. I'm sure that the ground here could actually be dropped as well to another little bit. So 
the only issue you may have here maybe would be if there was a possibility of tanking where the water would get in uh, underneath the EPS. I suppose it would depend on ground conditions and that sort of thing. And this is just a, a proffered solution to draw on a single leaf wall passive foundation. There's other uh, ones like the super ground where the insulation has got or fastings or fixtures between them and the other passive foundation that I've drawn is for a double leaf wall whereas this one is single but it looks quite effective so hopefully that's a help